Romans 1, 24 through 32. Therefore God gave them over in the sinful desires of their hearts to sexual impurity for the degrading of their bodies with one another. They exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worship and serve created things rather than the Creator who is forever praised. Amen. Because of this, God gave them over to shameful lust. Even their women exchanged natural relations for unnatural ones. In the same way, the men also abandoned, abandoned natural relations with women and were inflamed with lust for one another. Men committed indecent acts with other men and received in themselves the due penalty for their perversion. Furthermore, since they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God, he gave them over to a depraved mind to do what ought not to be done. They have become filled with every kind of wickedness, evil, greed, and depravity. They are full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, and malice. They are gossips, slanderers, God-haters, insolent, arrogant, and boastful. They invent ways of doing evil. They disobey their parents. They are senseless, faithless, heartless, ruthless. Although they know God's righteous decree that those who do such things deserve death, they not only continue to do these very things, but also approve of those who practice them. Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this word, and thank you for this message, and thank you for these people who are here to receive it. Lord, I pray that thy good and perfect will be done and that you would be glorified in what is said and done here. May we accomplish your good and perfect will. May we have eyes to see and ears to hear what you have for us this day. For it is in your name, Lord Jesus, we do pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Exchange the truth. Before I start, I want to tell you, this sermon is not politically correct. About as far from being politically correct as it can be. We know that man is made in God's image and we are made to worship God. Amen? Amen. God put into man the desire to know him. That's why we're looking, even those who don't want to find God, they're looking for something they don't know what, but God is the answer. But God also put within us something else. He put in us a free will. He wants us to love him because we want to love him. He didn't make us robots. He wants us to follow him because we want to follow him. We have free will. Sometimes I wish I didn't have free will. Because then I wouldn't follow the natural sinful will that I have. We rebel and we say no to God. And man has used his free will and chosen to follow his own way instead of God's way. And when man's rebellion against God grows strong, we, we are determined to go our own way. But something we must think about. Man's freedom is not without responsibility. We have the freedom, but with freedom comes responsibility. We are held responsible by God for choosing to follow our own way or his way. God will allow man to have his own way, but he turns him over to the result of following our, our own way. When man defiantly abandons God, God eventually will abandon man to his fallen nature and the consequences that come by disobeying him. Now this passage states, I think, the saddest words in God's word. God gave them over. Three times he says, God gave them over. Isn't that sad? 
So let's think about that. God gave them over. First is bodies. God gave them over for the degrading of their bodies. The result, leaving the one true God and following false gods or making our own God, is shown starting in verse 24. It says, therefore, God gave them over in the sinful desires of their hearts to sexual impurity for the degrading of their bodies with one another. Therefore, refers back to the preceding reason given in verses 18 through 23. Men, man chose to ignore or to suppress the knowledge of God within themselves and even within creation. God has a beautiful creation he made around us. And we know in our heart of hearts there is a God. But we choose, we choose to turn our back on it. We ignore it. So since man refuses to worship the creator, we worship the creature, the things that God has created. And since we willingly rebelled against the clear knowledge of God, he gives us over to our own desires. God gave them over to be controlled. He gave us over to be controlled by the things that we serve in place of serving him. Now, don't get me wrong. God still loves mankind. He hasn't abandoned us. What he has abandoned us to is to the things that we make ourselves our own problems. Everybody understand that, right? We are suffering because of the things we do to ourselves. God lets that happen. Mankind deserted God, so now God stops saying, okay, stop. He doesn't hinder them anymore, and he lets them have their own self-determination, which leads to self-destruction, and which is the price that man pays for demanding moral freedom. Because man has abandoned God, God has abandoned man to the, uh, the consequences of rejecting God. The punishment for sin is simply letting us have our own way. Because guess what? Sin always carries its own rewards. Think about that. It doesn't it? When we sin, we have consequences of our sin, don't we? They carry, sin carries its own reward. When man is left to himself, the bad always chokes out the good. Because that is the inclination of the fallen heart, the fallen nature. Man has no capacity in ourselves to restrain selfish uh, sinfulness or to cultivate righteous. In ourselves, we can't do it. We, we can't not sin. We, we can't be righteous in ourselves. We're just too weak. We know that. Man's natural development is not upward but downward. If we're left to ourselves, we will not go up, we'll go down. Mankind is not ascending to God, but I think mankind is actually descending from God. Humanity, I believe, has continued a downward spiral of depravity throughout history, and it's getting worse and worse and worse. When the restraints of the Holy Spirit are removed during the final tribulation, and that's what it says in Revelations, the Holy Spirit will be removed. During that time, oh man, all hell will break out loose here on earth and evil will really be bad because it's already started. When man stubbornly continues in his rebellion against the knowledge of God, God lets man go. He lets us go. But even God's divine relinquishment, even him letting us go, is really God's mercy. And let me explain that. He allows the effects of our sin to smite us 
and to hurt us so that we might turn to him and be healed. Amen? See, if he protected us to the point to where we didn't suffer the consequences of our sin, then we may not turn to him. But when we hurt and when we are bad and we hurt because we're bad and we know it, we will turn to God because he's the only one that can heal us. You know, Alcoholic Anonymous, they're governed by the similar same teaching. They teach that an alcoholic will never recover from their addiction unless you allow them to experience the terrible consequences of their drinking. That's the, that's the first time they'll actually start trying to change is when they actually suffer the consequences of their alcoholism. Stoics define, says, sinful desi uh, the desires of their hearts to sexual impurity for the degrading of their bodies as a reaching out after pleasure which defies all reason. Uh, Clement of Alexandria called it an unreasonable reaching for that which will gratifies itself. It is a passionate desire for forbidden pleasure. These cravings for forbidden pleasure are of the heart, the mind, the, the will, and the emotions. For inside the heart is where our degrading always takes place. It always takes place inside of us. What is allowed freedom in the heart will eventually control the mind and the body. So aren't you glad that God has not given you over to your sinful cravings? I am because <laughs> he convicts my heart. When I do things and I desire things that I shouldn't, I feel conviction and I'm glad. So praise the Lord, he's still hanging on to some of us. Not that we're good, don't get me wrong, we're not good. But he hasn't given us over yet, not everybody. Christ came not only to redeem man's soul from sin, but also their physical bodies. He redeemed me, hallelujah, all of me. Not just my soul, my body. You cannot separate spiritual morality from physical morality. They go together. Where does my soul live? In this body. What's inside this body? My soul. Hallelujah. They're not separate. Not in this life. Not here and now. Humanity exchanged the authentic for the counterfeit and as a consequence God gave them over to what they so perversely desired as we see in verse 25. Verse 25, they exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worship and serve created things rather than the creator who is forever praised. Hallelujah. Amen. These images that they exchange the right conceptions about God for falsehoods or false views of God, they exchange the truth, the true God, for false gods. The worst of all possible bargains is to take God's truth as a lie because lies do not lead one to God. Everything truth for exchanging truth for lies causes one to be deceived. We don't, there's, we don't know what to do. We are deceived. When truth and the lie are placed side by side, they choose to serve the creature or man's reasoning rather than the creator. That's what we're stating here. When you lay the truth and a lie, they choose the lie. That's what man has done. They passed by the creator and chose to be man-centered, to place man first, and thus worship and adore man and revered not the true God. If we don't worship the true God, we will worship a false God. The order of God's magnificent creation is turned into man's chaos. And this is heathenism, plain and simple. Heathenism is a lack of God in the life of man. 
So, if people persist in believing lies about God and life, the truth becomes harder and harder to recognize until it no longer can be recognized. Do you all understand that? If we believe in lies and continue to believe in lies, it's hard for us to believe the truth. James Edwards said, at first, a lie is simply more important than the truth. But it ends up becoming the truth. That's something we need to think about. At first, a lie is just simply more important than the truth. But later, the lie actually becomes the truth. To Paul, this is such a revolting thought for the God to whom he owes everything to be treated that he must bless him or speak well of him. That's why he says, who forever is praised. When we concentrate our speech on the goodness of God, we are blessing him. Hallelujah. Then we have shameful lust. God gave them over to shameful lust. Denying the truth about God explains man's horrific slide into sin and more and more vile sin, as verse 26 sets forth. Even their women exchange natural sexual relations for unnatural ones. The exchange of God for a lie continues with another. God gave them over. First it was to evil. Now it's to unnatural evil. We have evil and then we have unnatural evil. From from promiscuity to lesbianism. Thus it appears that he's given them over, which is even more more severe. Because of this, is what it says. That is because of man's rejecting the true God for false gods of his own making. For worship the creation rather than the creator. God gave them over to shameful lust. The word lust from pathos in the New Testament is always used in a bad sense. Which means it's vile or repulsive or degrading. or It's basically a description of these lusts. It's one of the grim facts of life that the more one sins, the easier it is to sin. Right? The more we sin, the easier it is to sin. You can never lie one time. Usually when you lie, you got to lie to cover up the first lie. The more we sin, the easier it is. And that's the truth. One may begin with a kind of shuddering awareness or just light that they're doing wrong, but you know, then we end up grossly sinning without a second thought. At the beginning, we might feel a little guilty, but the more we do it, the less guilty we feel. They exchange natural. The way nature is, the natural order of things, male and female. Here in reference to the natural sexual drive, the laws of order of nature are called into view. Male and female. Once you have begun dishonoring the sacredness, the dignity, and the purity of your body, the vile floodgates of unnatural physical sin can bust open upon us all. Perversion is the evil and twisted expression of that which is God-given and natural. If we don't follow the natural, we will follow the unnatural. The abnormality of homosexuality is addressed in verse 27. It says, in the same way, men also abandoned natural relationships with women and were inflamed with lust for one another. And men committed shameful acts with other men and received in in themselves the due penalty for their error. I want you to know that there's some verses here I wanted to skip over and I didn't want to talk about. But the truth needs to be said. Inflamed 
is literally burned out. Their lust burns out any natural control, any natural repulsion is blazed out of control. In other words, there is data here. Let me tell you, there's data here in the United States and even other countries of the world that shows that it's not uncommon for a homosexual male to have over 300 partners a year. I don't even know how they do that. And it's a sad thing. Because they're burning themselves out. They, I can see that God's word is very clear. Unimaginable, bizarre acts are committed and even mutilations can occur. So what does this passage teach about homosexuality? Homosexuality is an abandonment to shameful acts. That's what it is. When the difference between honoring God above all the created order is obscured, confusion between natural and unnatural becomes confused also. Homosexuality is unnatural. Lesbianism and homosexuality are contrary to God's creation. Homosexuality involves shameless acts. The capacity for shame is an index of moral sensitivity. Heated, it performs a valuable function in our moral guidance. But scandalized by repeated violations, the capacity for shame burns until it completely burns out. And there's no capacity for shame. And that's what we're seeing around the world today. No shame for the evil that they're doing it. And they want everybody else to do it and expect you to do it and say it's right. When it's obviously wrong. It's unnatural. Homosexuality is sexual perversion. And results in serious breakdown for those who are involved. Now they receive the due penalty for their error or their provision, perversion. The evil consequences occur because they are ordained by God. By His divine law. When one violates the laws of nature, one must pay the price. The price is God. His price. In the beginning... The Creator made them male and female and said, For this reason a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one. Then Jesus added his personal endorsement. He said, Therefore what God has joined together, let man not separate. In other words, God created humankind, male and female. And God instituted marriage as a heterosexual union. It is a heterosexual union. It is a one man and one woman. Not two women, not two men, one man. One woman. One and one. And what God has united, we have no liberty to separate. This is a three-throat action of God. It's established that the only context which He intends for the one flesh experience is a heritable sexual monogamy. One man, one woman. And that a homosexual partnership, however loving and however committed it may claim to be, it's against nature and should never be regarded as a legitimate alternative to marriage. Now, I'll talk politics for a second. I told myself I wouldn't do this, but I feel like I have to. You know what? Two men or two women, they can do whatever they want to in the privacy of their own home. That's between them and God. 
But they don't need to tell me it's right and they don't need to tell me I have to think it's right because it's wrong, it's not natural. And it's not a marriage. Call it a, a union, a, a civil union. Let them have the same rights as a married couple, I don't care. But don't call them married. You see, you don't understand. I understand. They're trying to make it right. They're trying to make us think it's okay. They're trying to make us think it's right. It's not working. Not to me, it's not. Now, we sit here and we shake our heads and we say, you're right, Pastor, you're right. Do you realize how many people outside that door, though, don't agree with me? A lot. It's pretty obvious, though, what is natural and what's not and what God created and what he didn't. Now we have their minds. God gave him over to depraved minds. This psalm, this is really a, not this, the scripture, it's plain speaking text, but it's no longer politically correct. Our society now views homosexuals as victims of nature instead of a personal choice. A fallen man. Remember I told you it's not politically correct. Well that's what they're saying. Our society is saying. That these poor homosexuals. They are victims of nature. Therefore society has become desensitized to behaviors. That just a few years ago. I can remember it was considered deviance. It was considered wrong. So we've gotten so smart that we know so much better now? No. Man has just become more sinful. Now we are pushed hard to accept such behavior as normal and proper. God says it is not. Pretty clear, God's word. Pretty clear, easy to understand. Yet as we state its wickedness, we must acknowledge one thing. God hates all sin. He hates my sins too. He hates your sins also. It's just another sin that God hates. Biblical love does not persecute, nor does it sanction homosexual behavior. Does not persecute. God calls us to focus on the soul of the person trapped in sin. They are no worse sinners than we are. We're all sinners. Christians can and we should minister to sinners, including homosexuals, in a kind yet firm manner. Just like we treat all sinners. Hallelujah. We're all sinners. The church should not turn its back on homosexuals. That's not what I'm saying. That's not what God's word says. We should not turn our backs on homosexuals who are searching and seeking to heal the hurt within their lives. Homosexual is a descriptive adjective and not an unchanging noun. God's grace can change whoever will come to him in repentance. I believe that with all my heart. No one has sinned too much that God cannot forgive. God hates sin, yet he calls us to love the sinner while we despise the sin. And the sin of a homosexual is no greater than my sin or your sin. We're all sinners. The difference is, I'm not telling you it's okay to be a sinner like me and do my sin, and it's right. Do you see the difference? So in conclusion, people tend to believe lies that reinforce their own selfish personal 
beliefs. Have you noticed that? When it goes, when somebody tells us a lie, if we like that lie, we tend to believe it's true. We want to believe it's true, right? Today, more than ever, we need to be careful about the input to form our opinions. The world is out there trying to make you have an opinion about something. And the world wants you to believe and think a certain way. With the world often presenting a sinful lifestyles and unwholesome values, we find ourselves constantly bombarded by attitudes and beliefs that are totally, totally, completely opposed to God's word. Be very careful. Be very careful what you allow to form your opinions. Be very careful what you let tell you is the truth. The Bible is the only standard of truth. I will say that one more time. The Bible is the only standard for truth. I don't care what science says. I don't care what the society says. I don't care what people says or the government says. It's the Bible that I believe in. Please, brothers and sisters, be careful what you let form your opinion. Evaluate all other opinions in the light of the teaching of God's Word. God's plan for natural relationship of one man and one woman within marriage is His idea for His creation. Unfortunately, sin distorts the natural use of God's good gifts. Sin often means not only denying God, but also the denying of actually the way that we are made. Sin hurts people. Sin hurts individuals and families and whole societies. How sad it is that people who worship the things God made instead of God, the Creator, and so often it distorts and destroys the very things that they claim to value because we worship the wrong things. People choose to reject God and God allows them to do it. We have a free will. God usually does not stop us from making choices that are against his will. He lets us declare our supposed independence from him, even though he knows that in time we will become slaves to our own rebellious choices. That's the sad thing. If we rebel against God and we continue to do so, we will become enslaved by our sins. We will lose our freedom to not sin. As long as we cling to God and His truth, we have a freedom to not sin. If we let go of God, we are slaves to sin and we have no freedom. Jesus said He would set us free, truly free. We are enslaved to our sin. Does life without God look like freedom to you? It doesn't to me. Look more closely. There's no worse slavery than slavery to sin. God is willing to receive anyone who comes to Him in faith. And Christians should love and accept others no matter what their background. So homosexuality is considered an acceptable practice by many in our world today, even by some churches. Yet homosexuality is strictly forbidden in God's word. So I don't know how they, how they reconcile that. 
Society does not set the standard for God's law. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm glad that society does not set the standard. God's law sets the standard. Many believe that their desires are normal and that they have a right to express them. God does not encourage us to fulfill all our desires, though, does he? Even our normal ones. Even our normal desires that we have because we are natural men. Even the normal things, God doesn't want us to do them all the time either. You see, because those those desires may violate his laws. And all our desires that violate his laws must be controlled. God tells us very plainly, To be self-controlled. Hallelujah. To control ourselves and obey His laws. Let us pray, please.